continuing on this is part two of the convertible collar today what we're going to do is we're going to cut and sew this in muslin so what we're going to start with is if you recall we have the two muslin pieces already cut out where we're testing our front and back bodice slopers so here's the front and back and of course the collar is going to sew into the neckline Let's start by getting out our pattern pieces and our muslin. And we want to set these up so these are all along the length grain. And also keep in mind that the under collar is going to be cut on the bias going with the length grain as well. The first thing I want to do is starting with the upper collar, I'm going to go ahead and line this up with the fold and then figure out about how much muslin I'm going to need to cut this out. As you move down your yards of muslin, if you run into the salvage area, be sure to tear that off so then we can continue blocking these pieces. So taking a look at the under collar, this is cut on the bias. So what I can do is quickly compare it to the fold and slide the pattern piece in parallel to the fold. And now I can see about how much fabric I will need to tear off so I can cut out the under collar. Now first let's take the upper collar. What I want to do is I want to get all the threads off the edge and then press and block this piece of muslin. If you'll notice I'm having a little bit of trouble on this one edge trying to pull a thread to go the full length of the side. Since it's competing with me what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clip this about a half inch in so I can tear it again. And then I want to make sure that one thread will come off the whole distance of that side so then I know it's able to be blocked correctly. Go ahead and check the block of your fabric and then if it needs to be corrected, be sure to correct it gently again because these are smaller pieces of fabric, you might overblock them. Press them going straight down to train the threads to stay exactly in their places and then let this cool off on the ironing board. Now after your piece has been blocked correctly, what I like to do is since it's going to be cut on the fold, I like to steam the two layers together on top of each other and this will help to keep them to not shift when you're cutting out the pattern pieces. And then of course, go ahead and repeat the same process to prepare your undercolor. So here I want to show you the undercolor and upper color. The grain is going in the same direction. So just double check that you folded them together correctly. Now taking a look at the upper color, what I want to do is we're going to cut this on the fold, but instead of cutting off the pattern piece, I'm going to go ahead and just fold this right along center back and then I can align the pattern piece perfectly up with the fold of the muslin. After you finish pinning you want to double check that the paper and the muslin are perfectly stacked on top of each other. You have to remember that if you align these and you're off by just a sixteenth because the muslin is on a fold it's actually a full eighth that you'll be cutting out your pattern piece incorrectly. Once you finish cutting out, be sure to get your shoulder notch. I'm cutting out as little triangles so it's easier to see on the video. As well as go ahead and do a little clip at the center back at the neckline and the top of the collar so we'll have a notch for center back. The next thing I want to do is I want to take this grain line and transfer it onto my paper. So with the sharp pencil, 
I'm going to go ahead and poke right through all layers. And I'm going to do the same thing here at center front. And then from the back side of the fabric, I can darken in the pencil dots on the opposite side. And then I'll be able to easily see them through all layers. Now I can take my time to come in here with a ruler and get center back, my grain line, as well as my center fronts. Once I'm finished marking and cutting everything out, I want to pin this back to the paper so then the muslin itself will not get distorted and lose its shape as I'm handling it. Now let's get ready to cut out the bias under collar. The first thing I want to do is cut away some of this excess paper so then it's easier to align the pattern piece on top of my muslin. And as a reminder, so here's center back and there's the fold and this is how we cut the upper collar. But for this bias piece, what we're going to do is we're going to pivot it so the grain is going in alignment with the length grain. It's also the same as the fold of the fabric. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure that this length grain is perfectly vertical with the grain of the fabric. So I've pinned it with just a tiny little bite and I'm able to still pivot my pattern piece. So then I can measure the distance from the grain line on the pattern piece out to the fold of the fabric. And then as I come down to the bottom of the grain line, I can make sure it's the same exact distance to the fold of the fabric. And this is how I will know that this pattern piece is in a perfect alignment on grain with the length grain. So after you finish cutting it out, be sure to clip a notch at the shoulder. And then also we're going to want to transfer this grain line onto your muslin fabric. So sharpen up your pencil. And what we'll do is you can poke through all layers right at the arrowheads. So do this from the front of the pattern piece and then flip it over so you can darken it in on the back side as well. So go ahead and take your pattern pieces apart and then we'll draw in the bias grain line on each pattern piece individually. And you're going to notice that they'll go in different directions from each other and this is correct. Now we're going to get ready to sew these and we want to be able to keep track of what is the right side and the wrong side. So the sides of the muslin where we've been drawing our grain lines, let's go ahead and put happy faces on that side and this will always be the correct sides of the collars. And let's start by putting the bias pieces together, right sides together, and then we're going to sew a stitch here along the center back. When you start sewing, be sure to hold the threads down in the back and we're going to sew this without doing any back tacks as well as when you get to the very end, of course, again, don't back tech. Clip your threads while still leaving about a half inch length on them so the stitches don't start to fall apart. And then go ahead and butterfly press this open using your fingernails. What we're going to do now is we want to put a stay stitch along the neck edge. If you remember, this is the edge that has the shoulder notches. Again, start with no back tacks. Hold down the thread. Sew the full length of the collar and be sure that you're keeping the center back seam allowances butterflied open. At the end, no back tacks and clip the threads down to about half of an inch. So I'm going to put the two pattern pieces together as a reminder that the under collar, which I have on top, is slightly smaller than the upper collar, which is underneath. Now when we sew these together, I just want to remind you that you're always going to start at center back 
and then gently stretch the under collar so the points will meet. Also, take the under collar and what we're going to do is we're going to finger press the neck edge right along the stay stitch, pressing the seam allowances towards the wrong side of the collar. Next, what we want to do is we're going to put the collars right sides together along the top edge and you're going to pin this at center back only. Make sure all your raw edges are aligned. Down on the machine, we're going to start from the center back. Be sure to hold the threads when you start stitching and no back tacks. Now that we have the needle down on the machine at center back, we can go ahead and use our, both of our hands to come out to the tips of the collar and match them up. Keep in mind that you're lightly stretching the under collar to meet the upper collar. Once you get to the edge of the seam allowance of the under collar, we want to make sure that that stays folded under as we sew over the top of it. At this point, you can do a back tack so this collar will not fall apart. So far, we've only sewn half of the collar, so we need to flip it over so again, we can start right here at center back. For the second round, go ahead and do a back tack so the collar will hold together really well. And then leaving the needle down, come out to the tips of the collar and again stretch the under collar to match the upper collar. And then be very careful as you're sewing along that you're keeping all the raw edges lined up. Be sure to sew over the folded edge of the under collar as well as doing a back tack at the end. And then go ahead and clip your threads down to about half of an inch on both sides of the collar. I want to do just a quick tutorial on how to turn your collars right side out and have everything turn out really clean and professional. As you know, when you fold under the seam allowances, they'll stack up in the collar and there's too much fabric. So what we want to do is, looking at where the fabric is extending beyond the seam, that's where we want to get rid of the fabric. Let's start by first folding under the seam allowance from the front edge of the collar, and then I'm going to turn it around here so I can use my scissors from the right side. And then having my scissors in alignment with the top edge seam, I come along and clip the extra seam allowance. I'll do the same thing here by folding the top edge of the collar. And then again, I'll take my scissors and following along the seam, I'll come in here and clip the extra seam allowance. So taking a closer look, basically what I've done is, if you follow the seam, that's exactly where I clip the seam allowance. Now I can come in here and connect the two while still leaving some fabric at the tip. Then you're going to fold in the seam allowances and you'll notice that they stack perfectly to match the same shape of the tip of the collar that you want. A quicker way of looking at this is if you were to cut the seam allowance heading towards the seam and then turn away from it and do the same thing for the other seam then we're getting the exact same effect. Now moving back to your ironing board, let's go ahead and steam and press your collar and then start working on rolling over the raw edges right along the stitch line. Now that we're pressing these perfectly flat and clean, if you notice there is a little bit sticking out beyond the edge of the seam line, Go ahead and clip those so you'll maintain the least amount of bulk in the corners. Once you've steamed all the corners, be sure to let them cool off on the ironing board. And this will help allow the press to be permanent. So 
So let's take a look at a collar that's already finished. So you'll notice here on the upper collar, everything is nice and clean and you don't see any stitching. But once we rotate it back to the under collar, you can see this top stitch along the top edge of the collar. This is an under stitch. And you can see that the under stitch is sewn to the seam allowances and the under collar only. Now looking at your under collar, remember this is still wrong side out. So here the right sides of the collars are on the inside and this is the under collar side. And all of the seam allowances are pressed towards the under collar. Underneath the machine, you're gonna wanna try to start sewing as close as you can to the tip of the collar, but keep in mind that it's impossible to start at the tip itself. Also, you're gonna wanna have your threads long, so when we're finished sewing, we're gonna tie them into a knot. When you're sewing, basically you're edge stitching the under collar and not touching the upper collar. And you're sewing through all the seam allowances and the under collar itself. Again, this is just an edge stitch. Sew as close as you can to the other corner, but keep it in mind that you'll know that it's impossible to get all the way to the corner. When you pull it out of the machine, be sure to clip the threads long. Here on the right side of the collar, you'll notice that we have the long thread from when we did our understitch. What we want to do is we want to pull these threads onto the wrong side of the collars. So starting from the wrong side of the collar, pull on the bobbin thread until you can see the upper thread looping through. And you can use a pin to collect that upper thread and bring it here to the wrong side of the collar. Now you can tie this into three knots. The first knot is to seat it, the second knot is to hold it, and the third knot is to lock it. Clip the threads, leaving about half of an inch so the knots will never fall apart. So most of you who have already sewn collars in the past, you might have noticed that if you try to turn a collar out using just your fingers, that it's never as clean and the tip of the collar is still kind of rounded looking. What I want to show you is how you can use your thumb and your scissors in order to hold those seam allowances stacked evenly. So you can see here I have the scissors pressed against my thumb on the inside of the tip. And then when I turn this right side out, none of those seam allowances will get all gathered and bunched up. And I can use the tip of the scissors to get the point of the collar to be nice and crisp and clean. Another way of doing this as well is if you have an old wooden chopstick and you sharpen it but you leave the tip of the chopstick just a little bit dull and you can use this in the exact same technique. One of the advantages of using the chopstick is when it comes time to start poking out the point of the collar you can get in there very tight small space and you're not worried about your scissors accidentally cutting the tip of the collar. Once the tips are ready to be pressed, go ahead and steam and heat and press this and then gently pull it tight as it's cooling off and that'll help it maintain its shape. Taking a closer look here, you can see where we've understitched on the under collar and there's nothing on the upper collar. Okay, so so far we've finished our collar Keep in mind that this is a whole collar, and we're going to attach it to our half-body muslin mock-up. What you want to do is make sure you've pressed the shoulder seams open flat. And then taking a look at the collar, what we're going to do is we're going to start at center front of the front bodice and the front of the collar, and then we're going to sew around towards center back. Make sure that the stay stitch along the neckline of your bodice is exactly half of an inch. And we're going to go ahead and start clipping the seam allowances towards the stay stitch so we can relax this neckline open flat. This will make it easier to sew to the collar. So just as a reminder, we have the shoulder seam and the darts and the side seam. 
are all to the outside of our maca. That way, if we ever need to do a fitting or any adjustments, it's much easier to pinch these seams or release threads to get the adjustments. So looking at our maca, this is the correct side out. Now looking at the collar, this is the upper collar and this is the under collar. The under collar is the part that gets hidden underneath. So the upper collar is what's going to attach to the bodice and that will roll over and hide the under collar. Now we've already pre-folded the seam allowances of the under collar. What we're going to concentrate on is the seam allowances and raw edge of the upper collar. Right sides are going to sew to the bodice, wrong sides together. Taking a closer look at that, again, this is the right side of the collar rolled out, and the right side of the collar, of the upper collar, is going to sew to the wrong side of the bodice. And this will be right along center front of the collar, center front of the bodice. Let's go ahead and pin these together so we don't forget where we're at when we walk over to the sewing machine. Over on the sewing machine, I'm lining this up to where I have the main body down first and the collar on top. That way I can double check that my notches are lining up at the shoulder of the main body and then I continue sewing to the back of the collar hitting center back of the main body. You want to be sure not to catch the under collar and you're only sewing through the upper collar and the main body. Go ahead and start this stitch using a back tack and then as you get to center back we want to make sure that the one inch fold on center back is staying folded over and then we're going to align this with the center back of the collar. And be sure to backstitch at the end. So now that we have the collar attached to the bodice, what we want to do is at center front, we want to take all of the seam allowance layers and clip the corners. And then we can tuck those seam allowances upwards into the collar. So go ahead and start pinning this under collar to the bodice. And what I'm doing is I'm pinning to the bodice first and then the collar second, making sure that everything is laying nice and flat. And the folded edge of the under collar is matching to the seam of the upper collar that I have just sewn. Here at center back, what I'm doing is I'm clipping the seam allowance of the upper collar underneath. Because starting at center back, moving on, we're not going to have to worry about sewing the seam allowances of the collar. I just want to get it where it's attached to half of the main body. So again, here I am pinning the seam allowances at the center back, and the seam allowances are pressed upwards into the collar. Now back at your sewing machine, what we're going to do is, at starting at center front, we're going to go ahead and edge stitch the upper collar through all layers, and this will be catching the under collar underneath. Go ahead and do a back tack at the beginning and the end, and then clip your threads short. Double check underneath to make sure that you caught the under collar with this stitch. And if everything looks good, take the pins off and let's go ahead and do a fitting on the dress form. So again, I like to start by pinning center back at the neck, center back at the waist, and then center back at the horizontal balance line. And then coming up to the front, remember to pin it half of an inch below the center front at neck. And then fold your collar so we can see how it looks. For the other half of the collar that's not sewn to the muslin, I like to go ahead and just pin this so it stays in place. 
but most of our focus will be on the wearer's right side of the body. Now, if I was truly going to start making a shirt for my client, I would want to see what is this going to look like if she had unbuttoned the very top button. So if we come down a small distance here, we can see about how far the collar tips would stick out onto the body. For the sake of this demo, I'm going to go ahead and pin these together where they would land at center front if there was a top button and it was buttoned up. In this way, we can see exactly what the collar would look like here at center back. And of course, here we're looking at the under collar, which is two pieces cut on the bias, and the seam should also align perfectly with center back. All right, so let's review. The center front edge of the collar is matching the bodice at center front. And then we had sewed the collar all the way around to center back. This way we were able to see, did the collar come up short or too long, or is it perfectly aligned with center back? In this demo, I'm realizing that I never added that 3 16 to my pattern pieces after I had walked them in the beginning because I had started the collars first and went back to show you how to walk a pattern. So here what we're going to do is use this as an example of how you can fix your collar pieces. So what I'm going to do is close to center back, I'm going to go ahead and separate my pattern pieces going parallel to center back. And then I can tape this to a new piece of paper so we can add 3 16 of an inch to the pattern piece. Now my example is going to be different from the project that you're working on. So you only need to do this if you also need to add to your collar. If it's the opposite, if you need to make your collar a little bit shorter, then splice it in around the same area and take away however much you need so the collar will fit back to your bodice. Basically what I've done is I've aligned the two pieces where it was spliced at 3 16 and I made sure the top edges and the bottom edges were still perfectly parallel with each other and I cut away the excess paper and now I'm just taping everything down so it's nice and flat and clean. Taking a closer look here you can see I've added the 3 16 inch to my collar and then what I want to do is align that back at center back on the muslin and then flip it over and make sure that the collar fits all the way back to center front. And then go ahead and repeat the process for your other collar piece. Now for learning how to make a collar, we just did half inch seam allowance, but if you were truly making a collar for production, at the neckline it would only be a quarter inch seam allowance, and at center back the notch would be off center so after you cut it out, there will be a double notch for center back. And the under collar piece would not only be cut to main body, but you'd also have cut to inner facing. And again, trim away to a quarter inch and have a notch off center. And you don't have to do these to your pattern pieces for this class, but I just wanted you to know that that's what would happen during production. Now that you know the basics on making a convertible collar, the next segment that we're going to work on is making a sleeve to match with your custom front and back bodice slopers.